Amen. Amen. We love the Lord and we serve the Lord. That's why we're here today. You know, earlier on I was thinking that because this is the time I, or we usually finish service. I said if I, if this is the time I'm going to start uh, speaking, I will give you a shorter version of the message. And, but then I promised myself that if I give you a shorter version, then I will present this message twice so that you don't miss any of it. However, I'm still thinking. And so today as we come, the, the message that I have to present to you today from the Lord is alive in Christ. Alive in Christ. So, I have decided as I am thinking and the Holy Spirit is telling me that I can go with my original thinking that I should present a short version of this message. And you will remember the short message rather than the long message. However, I will give you the other part of the message at a very early date so that you will have the complete word that God wants from us. I'm going to go back to our scripture lesson first. I would like to read our scripture lesson and then we are going to fast forward uh, to another section which I will move forward to. And God is going to bless us as we move forward today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we are going to put on the screen um, 1 John 2, 1 to 2. That's what we're going to go right with to the screen. 1 John 2, 1 to 2. So if we move to that slide... We're going to ask Jerry to just move it to that slide for us. That is 1 John 2, 1 to 2. And so when he gets there, we will have that on the screen, the scripture lesson, the first one. We're not going to worry to put that one on the screen, which I will read again. We had... Well, the Jim reading that one, so we're going to read that one again. And this is a beautiful passage from, from Romans, Romans chapter 6. And um, we're going to look at verses uh, 4 down. Romans 6, 4 down. But let me say that when God created man in the beginning, he gave him life. Isn't that wonderful? When God created us in the beginning, he gave us life. And I want to say that the life that God gave in the beginning was a life that should continue forever. As long as man obey and did not break his union with God, man's life would continue. However, when Adam and Eve sinned, they began to die. Man does not have life in himself to live this, the eternal life that God has promised. Man must be born again. We are assured of this from 
the word of God that we are to be born again. So as we look at Romans, Romans chapter uh, 6, looking at verses 4 through 11, the word of the Lord says, Therefore, we are buried with him in baptism into death. That like Christ, like as Christ was raised up from the dead, by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. And this is a passage that it is important to understand because some people will teach or say and try to prove from the scripture that Jesus rose himself from the grave. But the Bible is telling us that God raised him from the dead. And this is beautiful because if we look at verse 5, it says, For if we have been, what? Planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So, baptism actually represents the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So when a man or a woman is baptized, he is indicating that now he is dead to sin and is buried. So we don't bury somebody who is alive. Is that correct? We bury the person when the person dies. But this is in a spiritual sense. We are Bearing the person because now spiritually we are dead to sin. And because we are dead to sin, we bury the old man of sin and rise to walk in newness of life with Jesus Christ. And that's a blessing. That's a privilege. God has done that for us. So knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be what? Destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is free from sin. He that is dead to sin is free. That is to say, beloved, when we surrender our lives to Jesus Christ and allow Jesus to take control of our lives. This is called justification. Christ justifies us. Christ takes away our sins. And, and then we are as if we have never sinned before. Isn't that wonderful? That is wonderful indeed. So the scripture tells us, according to what is recorded in 1 John, 1 John chapter 2, 1 and 2, it says, My little children, these things I write unto you, that you do what? Sin not. And if any man sin, then you have an advocate with Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but also for the sins of the world. This is a, a beautiful statement, because what it is telling us here is that the substitutionary aspect of the death of Christ makes it possible for us to benefit from God's act of love. This is what John is saying. So the saving provision of the death of Christ and Calvary's cross is the hope of the human race. It is your hope and it is my hope. And so, beloved Christian friends, when we accept Jesus Christ, 
When we accept Jesus Christ, when we receive him into our lives as not only Savior, but Lord, many wonderful things will happen. One of the things that will happen is that our sins are forgiven. Our sins are forgiven. And what a relief to have our guilt removed. You know, if you should go to bed with guilty feeling, then perhaps most of the night you will be awake and thinking about that guilty feeling, thinking how to rid yourself of it. But because we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, then our sins are forgiven and our guilty feelings are removed. Then we are cleansed again because when man sinned, then he wasn't clean anymore, so he could not live the eternal life. So the blessing is that we are clean again. Isn't that wonderful, beloved? And that is why we are told that forgiveness means that we are accepted by God at the moment as if we had never sinned before. Matthew penned these words in Matthew 1 and verse 21 where he said, and she shall bring forth what? A son. And she and thou shall call his name Jesus. Why? For he shall save his people from their sins. So Christ Jesus saves us and this is wonderful because this our favorite hymn of many is a beautiful reminder in the song when it says, Rock of Ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. What it says, Rock of Ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy raven side which flow be of sin, the double cure. Cleanse me from its guilt and power. The blessed and amazing thing is here. And I want to say that it is wonderful to know that it takes only a moment, a moment to become a Christian. Just, just long enough to invite Jesus to take control of your life. Just that. If you pray the prayer and say, Jesus, take control of my life and decided that you're going to walk with Jesus, that's the time of justification. You become a Christian because you believe in Jesus and has decided to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. However, to remain a Christian results in growth. It might take a lifetime of growth. And that is why Peter, Peter in 2 Peter 3 and verse 18, he penned these words. 2 Peter 3, and verse 18, Peter said, we are to do what? Grow in grace and in the, the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. What Peter is telling us that day by day we are to grow in grace. How do we grow in grace? by studying the word of God, by understanding what God is telling us to do and be willing to do what God tells us to do. And the Holy Spirit 
will empower us. The Holy Spirit will equip us and prepare us and we will be growing in the grace of Jesus Christ continually. Growth is important. If we do not grow, what will happen? Yes, we will die. And you don't, we don't want to be dwarfed either. We don't want to, 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 to not able to grow. So we need to nurture our spiritual mind, our spiritual bodies. So growth is important. Therefore, it is of dire necessity to maintain our relationship with Jesus Christ. Peter encouraged every Christian to be steadfast. He said, be steadfast, showing care and be conscientious since we are endeavoring to be in the kingdom of God. I was at Al's memorial service on Thursday and I was talking to a young man. He's, he's 11 years old. I was in, it was interesting to talk to him because he's 11 years old and he called me Mr. Pastor. And I was telling him that at 11, at his age, I was baptized. His mother was standing beside him. And then his father came by and was standing beside him and asked, how are you doing in school? And he proudly said, I'm an A student, Mr. Pastor. <laughs> and I said, very good. That's very good. So, are you ready for baptism? He said, yes, but I'll be leaving town very soon. And I said, well, if you were going to be here much longer, I would baptize you. But mommy and daddy can prepare you for baptism. So, this young man was conscientious. He was endeavoring to achieve good grades in school. And if we are not conscientious, we cannot achieve good grades in school. So, Peter said, we are to endeavor to be in the kingdom of God. He says in, uh, let's go to 2 Peter 3 and verse 14. 2 Peter 3 and verse 14 says, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that he look for such things, seeing that he look for such thing, what is such thing? That is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, be diligent that he may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Isn't that wonderful? Are we able to do that on our own? No. It is God. It is the Holy Spirit that will enable us to do that. So, when the Holy Spirit is in our lives and helping us and empowering us on a daily basis, then we are going to continue on our journey, what, which journey is called the life of sanctification. So here, Colossians, that is Paul, telling us in Colossians 2 and verse 6, he says, As he have therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him. We cannot receive Jesus today and don't walk according to the commandment and the principles of Jesus Christ tomorrow. So Paul is saying, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him. That is to say, we are to study his words, we are to follow his words, and follow his direction. So as Christians, we must be alive in Jesus Christ. Let us therefore maintain 
that spiritual connection with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The question I still ask, how do we do that? How do we do that? And I'm going to ask, I'm going to go to the final text. I told her that this is a short version. So I'm going to the final text, which is uh, right here in John chapter 15, verses 4 through 6. The word of the Lord says, abide in me. Abide in whom? In Christ. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can he except he abide in me. Jesus said, I am the vine. I am the what? I am the vine. He are the branches. That's important. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, he can do nothing. He can do what? He can do nothing. And Peter continues, uh, Paul rather, continues to say that if a man abide not in me, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is what? Wither it. That is to say, he will die. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burnt. So we will be good for nothing. We will be burnt up to ashes. And that's not something that we want to experience. But when we abide in Jesus Christ, then we are going to grow just like a branch is on the vine. The branch will continue to grow and bear fruit, fruit that we will enjoy. So if we abide in Jesus Christ, we will grow and there will be fruits of righteousness. And I want to say today that the challenge of faith is in every generation. The challenge of faith will be in this generation, and if God should tarry much longer, the challenge of faith will be for the next generation. The vine and the branches must remain connected in order to be alive for growth to take place. Jesus said, let your connection remain in place. For without me, we are nothing. That is to say, we cannot remain alive. We can be alive because Christ is alive. You know, as Brian Wren wrote the beautiful hymn, and he, it says, Christ is alive. Amen. Christ is alive. Let Christians sing. His cross stands empty to the sky. Oh, beloved friends, let streets and homes with praises ring. His love in death shall never die. Christ is alive. Ascended the Lord, he rules the world his father made till in the end his love adores shall be to all on earth display because Jesus is alive. Because of Jesus, we have been passed from death to life. Let me encourage each one of us, therefore, beloved, let me encourage us today to commit and recommit our lives to Jesus Christ, allowing him to live in us. And through the Holy Spirit, we can build our hopes on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness so that we can live and remain alive in Jesus. And someday we will be in the heavenly kingdom with him.
always say, what a day that will be. What a day that will be. Beloved friends, it will be a day of joy. It will be a day of happiness. It will be a day of jubilation. But it will be a day of destruction for those who have not been alive in Jesus Christ. Let me see the hands of those who want to be alive in Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll put my two hands up. And beloved friends, God is going to bless us. God is going to enable us by the power of the Holy Spirit to live for him and prepare for him. And one day, we will walk with him in baptism. Is there any today, you have not been baptized, but you would like to say, Lord, one day I would like to be baptized and be alive in you. Is there a hand that will indicate that today? Not yet baptized. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my young one. Is there another? God is looking down by the power of the Holy Spirit and seeing you, and he can help you and enable you and empower you to be ready for his glorious kingdom. Loving Father, thank you for today. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for salvation that you have provided through the death of your son, Jesus Christ. We ask your blessing on each one of us, Lord. Many of us have put up our hands indicating our desire to be alive in Jesus Christ. Help us, Father, by the power of your Holy Spirit on a daily basis that we will be alive through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, that the devil will not come and have victory in us, but Jesus will have victory in our lives on a daily basis. Bless us and keep us, O Lord. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for healing us. And thank you for the promise that you have given us that you will come again one day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.